Welcome to No Apologies on Beck. I'm your host, Rick Becker, co-host Lori Hintz. Hello, Hello and welcome to a new week. I know you're like totally in civvies today. I know, today. this I'm really was my that. mistake. It's well, first I, time, 14 months. I see months. it. I mean, I see you, you when yeah. you come in like that. So this is new for our audience. They get yeah, to see yeah, you in yeah. the regular These are way. my new scrubs. But tonight's <laughs> our first night, uh, 8 o'clock. Yes. Exciting. Wednesdays and Sundays only. Um, and so it's kind of the new, the new way of doing things. This way we won't be kicked off for athletics. Right. Wednesdays and Sundays, Church no nights. sports, mm -hmm. just us. <laughs> All right. All right. So we've got a we've got a fun show tonight. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Chinese situation in Grand Forks. Uh, we've got a great guest coming up. Uh, first segment. I wanted to talk about crop subsidies, okay. federal or federal crop insurance in particular. Okay. okay. Now here's the reason. Uh, someone recently recently asked me what I thought about federal crop insurance, and I said. We shouldn't have it. We should not have federal crop insurance. We should not have federal flood insurance. We should not have anything federal as far as insurance. Those types of programs should be left to the states and to the private market. Sure. There's nothing in the Constitution that says we the federal, federal government shall provide right. <laughs> right. Right, heavily subsidized right. crop insurance. <laughs> right. You know, it's ridiculous. Now, the, the problem is that when you say something like that, people take just a tiny segment of it and say, hey, he wants to get rid of crop insurance. And which, of course, it's a program that's been around since the 1930s. It's been heavily increased and uh, has caused the farmers to become much more dependent um, since the 90s and especially since 2014. And so it's very hard to just suddenly rip it out. Um, but it's become a, a very significant problem. And uh, let's pull up our first one from the Cato Institute. We've got an article uh, examining America's farm subsidy problem. And this is from 2020. Uh, it's an ongoing situation. We've been hearing about it a lot. And some of the problem that they identify is that 60% of farmers' crop insurance premiums are paid by the taxpayer. You know, and that's not normally how insurance works, right? right? So this is heavily subsidized. The other thing is that the federal government has construed this program in such a manner that farmers have become dependent. 39% of net farm income is from direct government Aid. What was the amount? Thirty-nine percent. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, when you have essentially forty percent of all of your income coming from as a direct payment from the federal government, you know that things are going to be distorted. You know right. that 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 segment doesn't it farmers construction. It doesn't matter what the occupation, what type of person, they're going to become dependent and beholden on the federal government. Right. Um, there, the the other thing is that there's a very disproportionate payment those subsidies going to big corporations and the biggest and richest farmers more so than the small farmers. And that's the way this, this type of program is always uh, portrayed as helping the little guy. That's actually not the case. Pull up our next one from Farm Doc Daily. They have a, an article here, Why Crop Insurance Has Become an Issue. I mean, essentially, and this is from 2016, everyone recognizes that it is, in fact, a big issue. And what they say in this article is that it's what this is is a large expenditure program whose spending has grown fast even during a time of cr crop farm prosperity. So you would think that the program would be shrinking when things are going well. Things are going well, but right. it's not. And of course, that's the way it is for any federal government program. Um, premium subsidies account by far for the largest share of spending on crop insurance. They say here, this is interesting, prior to the late 90s, crop insurance could succinctly be described as a government policy to assist farmers in times of stress resulting from yield shortfalls, usually from weather over which farmer had little control. However, yield insurance has morphed into revenue insurance. And again, as I mentioned, in 2014, there was a significant increase in overall subsidies. They added price loss coverage, so now they're trying to guarantee the market. Mm -hmm. Again, where again. do they do that, yeah. except in socialist countries? Um, and so anyway, it's, it's, it's highly recognized. Go to the Heartland Institute one, if you would, please. Here we show um, that, again, in many organizations, they're recognizing this is bad for all Americans, this is bad for farmers, this is just a bad deal all around. What they are suggesting here is that crop insurance increases risk, and it absolutely does. They have here six reasons that they want to repeal or reform farm subsidies, and that is, number one, it redistributes wealth upward. They indicate that the largest 15% of farm businesses, mm -hmm. the largest 15%, receive more than 85% of all subsidies. What? 
doesn't seem okay. like that that's seems like one of those unintended uh, consequences. That's type exactly thing, right. Again. That is regressive. They indicate it damages the economy. It's prone to scandal. And I talked with a crop adjuster here earlier. Uh, maybe I guess it was two, three days ago. Uh, fraud is rampant. And and again, that's what you expect. That's what you see with Medicaid, Medicare, any federal program. Sure. Uh, federal crop insurance is no different. They go on, subsidies undermine U.S. trade relations. Just like tariffs, subsidies are a form of um, competition issues. Right. They, it, they harm the environment, oddly enough. Yes, crop insurance um, has a tendency to push farmers not to do uh, cover crops and to, to push so you're not rotating right. crops, which is better for the soil and so forth because everything is so managed and so determined by federal government regulations that you're going by that. You're not doing what would be normal, good sense Crop farming rotation. practices right. that they would have been employing in the old days, but now that doesn't get you the same amount of money from the federal government. So it harms the environment. Interesting. Um, and they say agriculture would thrive without subsidies, and that is absolutely true. Now, if we go and, and look at that, uh, um, Cato program, right. the, the Cato Institute, and what they were talking about, um, they are talking about how it's growing tremendously, like every government program. Mm -hmm. They are talking about how it ties farmers down because it does not allow them to say, you know what I think would be great, what, what I see, I'm predicting the future for this crop or that crop, what the demand might be, um, what my soil is like. It, everything is based on what they call insurance farming right. and not crop farming. And so they are tied down, they're dependent, they're effectively a slave to the federal government. Uh, instead of wondering what they're gonna do next year based on this knowledge, they're, they just have to look into a book and have the federal government tell them what's right. Which is never a good idea. It's never a good idea. <laughs> so the goal that I'm referring to is that we transition away from this type of program, which is horribly wasteful, and we transition to states and to overall free market policy. New Zealand went to a free market. Hmm. Uh, in 1984, 1984, New Zealand ended its farm subsidies, which was a bold stroke because the country is four times more dependent on farming than the United States. The changes were obviously initially met with resistance. Course. But New Zealand farm productivity, profitability, and output have soared since the reforms. So the, the, the myth needs to be debunked that the farming sector cannot prosper without government subsidies. This is not about hurting farmers. It's about helping all Americans and farmers in particular. Don't farmers, though want to be off subsidies in some manner. I realize well, I think you know, there is a there's an element of, of farming where that that's not appealing to people, I don't think. No, I mean you have to play the game the way right. the, the government has it set up. Right. And I think that if I was a farmer I would play the game, but I would be resentful. Right. And if we could undo that, I think that would be a very good thing. And the problem is that the politicians that be, uh, I know, I know. for instance, Senator Hoven voted against an amendment that would have made it so that millionaire farmers would not have gotten subsidies like this. He voted against that amendment, so that stays in, you know, that type of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. But when politicians firmly believe in this corporate welfare, in this subsidy system instead of the free market, we have problem following problem following problem, and the answer is always more government, more subsidies. It has to end. Now, we can do it in a way where we roll it back and still protect the farmer, not just undercut, right. but make it a good program. No chop and change, but incrementally. So that, Absolutely. Yep. Right, right.